Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, uh, actually right here in Westboro. There are like 20 of us here, 70 in all. But anyway, this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. You've seen my presentations before, either on cable or at, at an area senior center. You know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is very simple. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means Westboro, that means you want to stay right here. You don't want to move to Hudson. You don't want to move to Phoenix. You want to stay right here. And so the point is, who are the people you need to know? Uh, and what are the programs you need to know about in order to stay right here? So my co-host, whom everybody seems to know, is Shelby Marshall, uh, second term select woman um, and, and political, she loves it, uh, who finds these great guests for us to talk to about how you can make your lives better here in Westboro. We have a guest who has been on, on the show before, but she's back. You know, she was so popular, back by popular demand. So whom do we have today, Shelby? Hi, Arthur. Great to see you. And um, hello to our friends, Frank and Mary, and their friends. Our, our viewership continues to grow based on what I'm hearing on the streets. So that's fantastic. Um, that means we're we're doing good work and we're bringing programs to them that are meaningful and that they, um, you know, find helpful as they uh, age enjoyably here in Westboro. So I'm really excited uh, that the Director of Youth and Family Services here in Westboro, Kara Presley, is a return guest um, on Frank and Mary. Um, actually, usually I'm out doing, um, you know, kind of the solicitation, if you will, for guests because I heard about an interesting piece of news. In this case, so I really was really excited that Kara had approached us um, to talk about a topic we talked about before, um, as we were all dealing with COVID and, and you know, and even post COVID or are we even post COVID? I'm not even sure. Anyway, we'll talk about that actually. So, um, without further ado, we're going to kind of talk about um, mental health uh, and the importance of caring for your mental self, if you will. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kara, and, and we'll just I'm, fire some questions. Oh, go ahead, Arthur. I'm going to add to you a new word. Oh. A new word. The word is called endemicity. It was in the last issue of the Economist, and it is the 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 state that we are now in when where the pan or that we are heading to where the pandemic turns to being endemic. And so it's just part of life, you know, and every year you got to pay attention because if it gets you, it might kill you. And so you get your new dose of whatever because the thing keeps changing. It's like the flu, you know, it's turning into the flu. The the new endemic, the world of endemicity. Maybe maybe we can have Aiden insert a slide. Like you know like on like the kids shows there would be like a you know a word yeah, of the day. A little word. Go. And the visiting, right? So anyway, I, 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 we digress. No problem. Um, I am so happy to be here and thank you for having me at my own request. Um, I, I really like that word. I wrote it down, Arthur, and I'm going to keep it and use it because it absolutely fits with why I wanted to come talk to you today. I think that the first time I came on this show was at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, and we were talking about like, how do we cope with the traumatic experience that we were all dealing with as we were locked down and in quarantine and and um, trying to figure out like how to get through this presumably at the time we thought brief period of high stress. Well, it actually turns out it wasn't brief. Uh, to your point, Shelby, is it over? It's not actually, it's different, it's changed. We're all back out in the world in different ways we weren't a year ago, but but I wanted to come because I wanted to talk about how we really did think this was going to be a short term thing we had to kind of power through and cope with in some to, to manage our acute distress at the time. But now it's turned into something different. And, and it's the long standing mental health impact and kind of for many people low grade and for some people really pretty significant emotional distress that we have are experiencing. Um, that I wanted to talk with you all about and give you some sense of sort of hope and validation that you are not alone and talk about what resources are out there um, to support folks. And, and Carrie, if I can, because, you know, for Frank and I that might be watching, they might immediately sort of maybe or may, may not thinking about someone else's mental health and so maybe. So this show is, I just want to stress that it's relevant to regardless of your age, 
Um, but it may be relevant to your grandkids. Um, it may be relevant to your kids who may be helping you with caregiving. It may be relevant to you, um, Frank and Mary, and kind of where you're at in your life. Um, so um, what Kara's going to share with us and some of those resources, these are for you. Um, and can I just can I just add something to that, Shelby? You yeah. know, so for folk, you know, folks, so you're like, you know, I'm gonna be 72 in January, right? So I'm I, you know, I grew up with you, right? Remember what mental health meant when we were growing up? It's like, ah, right? It meant like a crazy person. It meant like axe murderers and crazy. I remember my older brother, who had actually been in a monastery for six years up in Spencer and came back. And and was just getting out and was really you know a, a tough time readjusting and 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 the and the folk and the folks there had said he should really see a psychiatrist, and my father was so totally he doesn't need a psychiatrist he's not crazy right, this is not about crazy mental health and the younger people get this right that mental health is just part about health you know. So I, I just wanted to add that because I think it's really important people people these younger people forget how for folks of my generation, mental health meant something very different from what it from what it means today, okay? You got it. I can think of stories of my own relatives who, um, of your generation and actually a generation of, uh, above you, like my grandparents who were institutionalized for mental health reasons because that was what people did. Instead of dealing with mental health in a way that we talk about it, like we talk about diabetes or we talk about kidney disease, it was a secret that had to be shut away and treated with behind closed doors. And that is exactly what I don't want to happen. And so what I wanna talk about today is not, it, it's the whole spectrum. Yes, for some people, this pandemic has led to a mental health crisis. Sadly, the, the um, I just learned actually today that um, I think, there is a national organization of pediatricians who I think today declared that the mental health crisis during the pandemic is now a, a public health crisis. It, it's, it's now been declared officially across the country a crisis. There are more people who are requiring hospitalization than we've seen in um, you know, a century. There are more people who are um, thinking about suicide and, and acting on those thoughts than we have seen in a long time. And I, and I do want to acknowledge that that is happening for some people. Um, there has been tremendous suffering, both illness, loss, loss of loved ones, loss of income, loss of connection. There's been so much that that has led for some people to become truly despairing and really requiring some, some intense help. But I also wanna talk about those of you who are just not feeling like yourselves. Um, I, that, that piece about that Shelby mentioned about not knowing if we're, if, if this is over, that, that in, domos, in domesticity, did I say it right? <laughs> and that's not end right. The, <laughs> but I, I like the way that sounds, but it's end not right. Endomisticity, yes. Endomisticity. I mean, it's a thing, it's a thing. Like. So our brains are designed to manage crises and to recover from crises. I always use the example, and I probably have done this on this show, so forgive me if I'm being repetitive, but of when, when you get ready to step off a curb to cross the street and a car comes zooming by and barely misses you, what do you do? You step back off the curb, your heart is racing, your adrenaline's going, you could probably run, run down the street if you needed to, and, and your brain taught your body to be on alert. You're not, you're not, you have no idea what the person next to you is talking about as you're walking down the street. You have no idea what else is going on. You're just about like, how do I keep from getting hit? Our brains are designed to respond to traumatic experiences like that. Huge rush of adrenaline, huge, huge like um, the, our reptilian brain. It's like our, our designed to act and keep us safe. But this pandemic thing, this COVID thing has made our brains not know when it can stop acting like that. It doesn't know when we're safe. It doesn't know when it can let our adrenaline down and when it can let our bodies relax and let our thinking brains come back in line because we just don't know. We don't know if it's okay. Here, there was a recently an NPR um, podcast I was listening to and it was talking about how we're living with this constant low grade fear and exactly. or in uncertainty. And it's little things about, are my kids masked? Are they safe? 
Um, I want to book a trip. Should I book the trip? Is it going to be the same trip? Is it going to, you know, what if it gets yeah. canceled? What if the flights, that, you know, so yeah. it, it's, it's sort of that constant drumbeat. And, um, and the only thing I can sort of relate to is um, one of our square one presentations um, that we've hosted in the community um, with youth and family services is um, when we heard about anxiety and that constant um, uh, stress and noise, my own word, that individuals who suffer from anxiety kind of report. And, mm -hmm. and, and so for those of us who don't, I guess, normally would not think of ourselves as being anxious about things, I think we've all, I think many have seen that creep into our daily lives. And it just creates a tension that to your point, like the human body, mind, spirit is not accustomed to. You got and, it. And as we get more accustomed to it, it has downsides to it, right? <laughs> like if you're constantly on, then, you know, that, that has implications, but go ahead. Thank you. And thank you for sharing kind of your relatability to that, because that's exactly right. Um, there's um, in, in the clinical world, we call it hyper arousal. Um, we're not designed to be like that. But in, in layperson terms, it's like being amped up or on edge or high, on high alert. Um, those are things that probably a lot of you can relate to that maybe you didn't even <laughs> relate to before. I mean, it brings me back to conversations we've had about drug use, right? So when mm -hmm. you take a drug and it brings you to that level, you know, that, and again, I'm not a clinician, but then, you know, to get back down and then be comfortable at a norm, you know, to me, it's like that same thing. If we're already amped up, like how do you comfortably get down and, and you know, and be in a kind of healthy state? You got it. You got it. That's exactly it. So what do we, what do we do with this? Um, I think kind of giving yourself permission to acknowledge that this is happening to you and to recognize the ways that it's impacting you is probably the first thing you need to do. That, that no one is strong enough or tough enough or healthy enough not to be impacted by these things. Um, for It may manifest in all kinds of ways for you. You might find that you're physically tense more than usual because you're kind of on alert. You might find that your sleep is disrupted. You're not sleeping as well as you used to. You might find your appetite is all over the place. Um, I find for me, it impacts my memory. And I and, and memory is a confusing thing that I know you talk with your um, with your viewers about a lot anyway. Um, there's a new there's a new addition to making things. I, I'm forgetting things and I'm losing things. I have a place for everything in my world. Um, anyone who knows me is probably not surprised to know that, but I've been losing things. I've never lost my keys a day in my life until this year and I've lost them like 45 times. So that you might be able to relate to some of these things. You might be a little more irritable than usual. Um, it, it, these are the ways that manifest. And it may be even more than that. You might find yourself crying or sad or, or feeling particularly lonely or and being sad for reasons you don't understand, being irritable for reasons that you don't understand. And I just want you to know that that is normal. Right. And that, next my... I want to talk to you about what to do about it. Should I be raising my hands for all these things? Uh -huh. or, oh, this is not about me. Okay. So yeah, so give us some hope here, Carol. Like there, there is hope. And, and one of it is to come out about this stuff. Share your feelings. Share your um, mild to significant anxieties with the people who love you and trust you. Um, not, not saying that you have to get help or and, and maybe, but, but we'll talk about how to get help, but start talking about it because the more that you hear that other people are experiencing this, the more you'll feel normalized and that will help. So talk about it. Number one, we also don't want just, to- And, and oh, just, yeah. to add one, just to add one thing to that, you can't talk about it if you're not talking to anybody. And the, and the, and the big issue with so many of my clients, with Shelby said, with so many folks is that they have retreated into this, if they were if they were not seeing many people before, right now, especially an older person with a dead spouse in a single family house, right on a street, and is afraid to go to the store and is afraid to go to the drugstore and even and is nerve and you're not talking to anybody. Well, you can't get this out if you're not talking to anybody. You right? got it. I, just, I had to throw that out. You got yeah. it. I wrote that on my list. My list of top things to to manage is to connect with people. Yes, talk about what your experience, but first and foremost, thanks. That's what I should have said first. Just connect. 
connect with people. One of the best anecdotes for these kinds of symptoms we're seeing in ourselves and our loved ones is laughter. <laughs> laughter. Um, connect with people. Tell bad jokes. Listen to bad, laugh at bad jokes. I mean, they're all over the place. So, you know, um, I would say connect with people, laugh, do what you can to get good and regular sleep. Um, set yourself a sleep schedule, practice um, improved sleep hygiene, go to bed at the same time every night, wake up, turn it off, turn off your screens at least 30 minutes before you're trying to fall asleep, at least hard to do. I know it's a very techie world. Um, eat healthy food and move your body and get a little sunshine, get a little fresh air. Even if it's a little bit, go sit on the front stoop for an hour, um, for 10 minutes at a time. All of these things add up to improve the literally improve the chemicals, all that hyper arousal chemicals will be like softened if you do those things for yourself. Then I also want to talk about what else? What if that's not enough? What if you're still struggling? There are several things you can do. And I want to say first, call us. If you don't know where to go, if you don't know what to do, we offer free clinical consultations to any and every Westboro resident. You, it, it's a one hour meeting with me or one of the other counselors in our department to talk about anything and everything related to relationships, emotional health, mental health, just to help you know where to go, what to, what to do, who to turn to. Give us a call. We can provide you a consultation. If you're not ready to do that, I would encourage you, you can also like take a screening or get screened to find out, am I really dealing with a serious mental health issue? And I wanna suggest a couple of ways you can do that. Youth and Family Services has an online screening tool. For those of you who like to be on the internet and who access computers, please, and, and we'll make sure we, we put this up, uh, what the URL is, what the address is for you to go and take this. It's an anonymous screening. You can screen for several different things. And if you screen um, positive for some mental health issues that might be happening, you'll get resources of where to take next steps and what to who to reach out to. Um, also, if you are in, not into the online thing, we will do screenings in our office as well. Um, a little different than the clinical consultations, but there might be some overlap. You don't, you can even come in and do an anonymous screening. Sit with us for 20 minutes. We have you fill out a little form that's a screening tool, and then we give you feedback about the results and then give you resources. I'm also sharing with um, Arthur and Shelby a resource list that will be um, available to the viewers, and it will um, give to you more specific um, places to turn and people to go to. There are 24 hotline, 24 hour hotlines that you can call that are anonymous and free and people are there trained to support you just to talk, just to provide you support. So if you're having trouble connecting to people in real time, you know, some support is a phone call away. And then finally, our, we have a new program. Well, it's not new anymore, but um, through Westboro Youth and Family Services called Reach Out Westboro. It's in partnership with our friends at Westboro Connects, and it provides, we got a grant through the Metro West Health Foundation to provide trainings to groups of community members who are at high risk of particular mental health distress because of the pandemic. We know from the research and the data that um, unpaid caregivers are at higher risk than others of having acute mental health distress. We know that young adults are, essential workers are. And so we're, we have planned these little trainings for these particular groups. And right now we're planning one particularly for unpaid caregivers. That means if you are a person who has a major responsibility for caring for another person in your life and it's not your job, it's something you do, then this applies to you. And it's just a little online training or a, a virtual training with a mental health professional, it lasts just an hour and a half, tips and tricks about how to recognize signs of mental health distress in yourself and others, and how to, some tips about how to manage that distress and how to get help. So a expanded version of what we're talking about today, but in a different format. And that will be probably in late November, or early December, and I'll make sure that you all um, know the dates once we have it so that you can sign up for those as well. You know, one of the things I want to emphasize about this, it's, um, I think it's easy to be, 
it's easy to take the approach as an unpaid caregiver of, okay, there's training. Yeah. But this is, this is my reality. How's it really going to help? You know, it's one more thing. Um, I'm going to get resources. I'm going to go find the resources and it's just more, and I've already got my plate full. And I guess I would challenge that a little bit and say that your reality of caregiving is constant. It's not going to end. Um, and in many cases, particularly if you're caring for someone who's older or someone who has dementia, candidly, it's probably going to get worse. And if you don't take care of yourself, then um, the person who you are giving hours and hours of time, sweat, you know, uh, tears to, um, to ensure their health and safety will not have you um, because you will physically or mentally not be able to take care of them. And, you know, don't blow this off. Don't say, oh, yeah, no, it's not going to happen to me. It happens all the time. I've seen it in 15 years of the kind of work we do. I know Arthur has seen it and Kara, I know certainly you've seen it, but um, it's easy to say, uh, it's kind of like ex physically exercising. Uh, I don't, how would I even get started? This is a great way to get started. It's free. It's part of your taxes, by the way, in an extension, because can we, you know, Kara, like, I know this is part of a grand effort, but you know, this work is being brought to you. Um, so use the service. And I just want to add a couple of things. So once again, the purpose of this show is if you're Frank and Mary, to have you actually see the people that you'll be dealing with. So you're like, oh, that's like a real person. So, so here's Kara Presley, right? So once again, going back to my generation, this is not Nurse Ratchet, right? This is not okay. Nurse Ratchet. And you all know who that is, right? Because from our generation. This is Kara Presley, right? This is a person, this is like a real person. These are real people. And we're not, and when you hear a term, the you know, clinical acute mental health distress, what that means is if you're really bummed out, if you're just really bummed out, this isn't, you know, don't think of this in clinical terms. It's just like if you're just like overwhelmed. And 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 the big piece, going back to what Kara started with, is among other things, just talking to other people who are going through this, right? as well as talking to people who are kind of professionals in the field is a big deal. It's just a big deal. And, you know, and, 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 and Shelby and I hit this all the time with folks who are trying to deal with this stuff. Uh, they often, I was just talking to a woman today who's got her, you know, her, and both of her parents and she's trying to deal with both of her parents and, you know, one's got physical problems and one's got health problems. And I told her at the end of the day, I said, you know, you are the great blessing of today for me. When I think about what the blessing, it, it, it's you, because I see a person who is just has stepped up to the plate and is trying to do the right thing, right? So if you've done that, you know, kind of pat yourself on the back, you're trying to do the right thing and just try to do the things that can help you do the right thing. It's really, really important. So uh, as you know, Karen, my job is to provide comic relief and keep track of the time. So I'm looking at the time and I know that we're, we're close. I, it was a great for you to, to, to get Shelby to come back, to have you come back on, right? And you're always welcome back here. And Shelby, this is just really important stuff. This is the reason why, this is the reason why you made this a great show. You're just really wonderful. So I'm just gonna end with that. So folks, thank you very much. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Take advantage of the information that's on the, that, 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 that we're gonna show on the screen connect with these people, your tax dollars at work. If you're bummed out, don't think acute mental health distress. If you're bummed out, you should do this. Thank you very much for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you.